And good day, everybody, or not so good day. Episode 120 of the Talking Fires podcast. Ben Fadden, your host. Another sad day, another uh, bad day for Major League Baseball for the players. Not really surprising if you were following on Twitter and everything that was happening uh, all day. And considering all the events that happened the previous day, it didn't really seem like momentum was going to be happening for a deal. Um, But it's still really embarrassing. And it's sad, frankly, to see these games continue to be delayed and continue to be canceled. Now, just reacting, breaking news happened a few moments ago. Major League Baseball has announced that they are canceling the first two weeks now of games and opening day at the very earliest will be April 14th. Now Uh, an agreement has not happened yet. It's not close. It seems like to happening. So opening day could very well be in May. It could be in June. Who knows even if we have a season at this point uh, because both sides are sticking to their guns. They don't want to accept anyone else's the other side's deal because then that makes them makes it look like they're the ones that folded in all of this. Uh, So just really sad. We'll get to all of that. Um, Well, I'm obviously going to, before getting to this, I did want to discuss some of Eric Cosmer's comments that he made on Brian O'Grady's podcast, Breaking Bats, some interesting comments he made. So we'll start with that and then get into everything that happened today, my reaction to that. Um, and we'll get into how the Padres schedule is affected. Um, and actually, before we get into Hosmer's comments, I'll, I'll read the release, the breaking news again that Rob Manfred just released. Good thing that he didn't step to uh, a podium because, my goodness, if he stepped to a podium, we would have been there would have been some big trouble. Um, Major League Baseball statement, March 9th, 2022. Rob Manfred, he says, in a last ditch effort to preserve a 162 game season this week, we have made good faith proposals that address the specific concerns voiced by the Major League Baseball Players Association and would have allowed the players to return to the field immediately. The clubs went to extraordinary lengths to meet the substantial demands of the Players Association On the key economic issues that have posed stumbling blocks, the clubs propose ways to bridge gaps to preserve a full schedule. Regrettably, after our second late night bargaining session in a week, we remain without a deal. Uh, Today, by the way, that's false because today was not a late night night bargaining session. It's not even seven o'clock on the East Coast as I'm recording this right now, as I'm saying this. So that's not really very true. Uh, because of the logistical realities of the calendar, another two series are being removed from the schedule, meaning that opening day is postponed until April 14th. Again, that's not totally true either because that doesn't mean Major League Baseball's opening day is going to be April 14th. That just means that's the earliest that it's going to happen. Uh, Manfred says, we worked hard to reach an agreement and offered a fair deal with significant improvements for the players and our fans. I am saddened by the situation's continued impact on our game and all of those who are a part of it, especially our loyal fans. We have the utmost respect for our players and hope they will ultimately choose to accept the fair agreement they have been offered. Well, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Um, We'll get into this more. Both sides don't want to accept the other side's offer because they want to control things. And so that's just the reality of where we're at right now. Both sides are going to stick to their guns. They don't want to accept the other side's offer. And so before getting into that, we'll get to that. But earlier today, Eric Cosmer had an episode out with Brian O'Grady on the Breaking Bats podcast. They did not talk about Padre fans or anything like that. Talked about Hosmer's career. Uh, his off season, his wedding, Hosmer supposedly has a basketball court in his house now. So that's how he's getting his cardio in. Um, he said, yeah, talked about the Royals, uh, talked about some swing adjustments he was making, you know, staying more on his backside instead of being on his front side like he was last year. He's 
handsy a lot with the swing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. An interesting comment that I wrote about a little bit on GaslampBall.com earlier today. He said that, talking about Bob Melvin, I've heard nothing but good things about Bo Mel. I guess that's what they call him. I got to talk to him uh, right before the lockout got going. Uh, later in the quote, he said, I've had nothing but the utmost, utmost respect from the other dugout playing against him. Um, so what I took from that is the utmost respect kind of thing there. That might not seem like a very like out of this order, out of the ordinary quote, because that's something that any player says when a new manager comes in. Usually they're I'm excited to play for him, blah, 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 blah. But here that's what Hosmer's saying. Uh, so that's not different in other ways. You know, when other managers come in, that's how, just how players react. That's what they say. Because what else are they? What else are they going to say? I hate this manager. I don't want to play for him. No, but what's different is he didn't even he didn't have the chance. He he couldn't have even said this about Jace Tingler, his last manager, obviously when he was hired because he didn't know who he was. Probably he didn't have big league managing experience. And so Bob Melvin, he has the experience, like I've mentioned before, he has that credibility. So players were automatically listen to him and buy into his message. Day one of spring training might be summer training, whatever the heck this lockout ends. But you get what I'm saying. They're going to buy into his message regardless of when this is. So I think that just the quote there, maybe it's not that unique, but it's something that is good because it's saying that he has the utmost respect for Melvin. He couldn't, he couldn't have said that for really Andy Green or Jace Tingler because he didn't know who they were. They had no managing experience. They had no big league managing credibility. They didn't win with low payroll teams as a manager and make the postseason like 10 times in Oakland. They didn't do that. They had never managed before. So, you know, hopefully Jace does well in Minnesota. Hopefully Andy's doing well with the Cubs, or I think that's where he's at now. But just there's a very – it varies in the way that Hosmer could have gone about that because – the circumstances now allow him to say he has the utmost respect for Bob Melvin because he knows who he is. He has that credibility. So I did want to touch on that. Hosmer did say, quote, San Diego will win a world championship and Manny's going to be a big part of that or be that reason because of his leadership, blah, 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 talking about how Manny's a good leader and all that. So that's expected. We know Manny's great. You know, this is a big Manny podcast. Love Manny. Had Manny's trainer on. Uh, we know who Manny is. So that's not really anything. But I did want to highlight that. Just the just, I guess, it's not what Hosmer said. It's that he was allowed to say it because of the move that Preller was make that Preller made, bringing in you know an experienced manager. Um, but let's get to obviously the news of the day. Major League Baseball obviously canceling the second week of the regular season uh, on episode 119 of the podcast. You can go look that up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. I had on um, the owner of Basic Pizza. It's a, about a block away from Petco Park. And so I had him on just to get a little sense of what local businesses are going to have to deal with because of Major League Baseball not having these games, these home Padre games that were supposed to be scheduled. And they're going to take a big hit. Um, so you can go listen and watch that, support any local businesses that you can including Gaglione Bros, who's the sponsor of this episode, sponsor of the last, you know, uh, handful of episodes since we partnered up, Joe Gaglione and those guys over at Gaglione Bros, locations in Point Loma and the sports arena, uh, gaglionebros.com for their menu. You can find their address and their phone number there. Uh, great cheesesteaks, great garlic fries. Love the cheesesteaks with the garlic whiz, or garlic whiz, sorry, cheese whiz. Uh, at Petco Park, they're there down the third baseline uh, in the upper deck as well. So many options that you can find Gaglione Bros at that. They are the sponsor of this episode. So go support them. Basic Pizza, any local businesses around Petco Park as well. They could because they need it. Um, he, the owner, Eric, was saying on the episode that he's having a hard time, you know, finding, uh, you know, paying the bills, paying the payroll when baseball season isn't happening because it's kind of slower there. Uh, 
than when baseball season obviously happens. The Garth Brooks concert definitely helped them, uh, but that's obviously only one night where Padres, it's the whole week sometimes during homestands. So go help anyone out that you can. Uh, but getting to this news, kind of going like I usually do in my notebook here, I have a timeline of the exact times that everything happened. Uh, we can start with 11 a.m. Pacific time. The players presented, this was today, Wednesday, March 9th. The players presented a counterproposal to Major League Baseball uh, at Major League Baseball's headquarters. Um, that didn't go over well. At 12.38 Pacific time, p.m. Pacific time, Players Association moved their pre-arbitration ask in that counterproposal to the league to $65 million. Uh, and so that's good. It was at 70 million earlier in the morning, according to Jeff Pass on ESPN.com. So the gap now in pre-arb money is $25 million because the league is at 40, player association at 65. So they have they have definitely made that gap smaller, which is encouraging. Um, the luxury tax, they proposed $232 million as the luxury tax threshold. Four teams are penalized starting in 2022. Um, so that's a $2 million gap between the $230 million threshold the owners want and the $232 million threshold that the players wanted. Um, so that wasn't a big deal. Again, that's compromise. That's a huge, big, uh, you know, encouraging sign for baseball fans that, you know, know what they're talking about in these, you know, that have been following these talks. And so someone like me, I was encouraged, hey, they're really close, uh, but that all that you know went out the window um, when you know real stuff hit the fan, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, with the whole international draft and not holding everything up now, which is why supposedly why there's no agreement. No agreement happened today. Is the international draft, and we'll get to that. Uh, but Steve Cohen, I did want to mention that owner of the Mets, richest owner in sports. He liked a tweet by a fan about owners not wanting to accept a deal about, from the players and that they want to be the ones in control. The, the, the fan, I guess, was saying on Twitter that, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong here, but the owners don't want to accept a player's deal because that's probably going to, you know, signal to the public that they folded and that they, you know, just they weren't in control. And Steve liked that. And supposedly, according to Joel Sherman, Steve Cohen uh, mistakenly liked that tweet, which I guess we all do sometimes, but then you unlike it. It was still liked last time I checked. And he told, and Steve told Joel Sherman that he doesn't know how to retweet, which is a lie because he retweeted in 2017. Um, so it was about some Patriots game. But he so that's that was a lie, but he was just kind of covering his butt there. Um, but I mean, I think this is definitely something to talk about. Peter Seidler, I wanted to look him up to see if he liked anything recently. And it had it, it had been a while. Um, I forget when, but it had been a while. It wasn't in 2021, wasn't in 2022. I don't even think it was in 2020. Um, so it had been a while he, since he had liked anything. Um, just trying to get any clues I could maybe, but he's obviously smarter on Twitter than Steve Cohen is. Uh, but this is something to talk about. Steve Cohen, richest owner in the league. He wants baseball. He spent $43 million a year on Max Scherzer, spent money on Starling Marte, spent money on Mark Canna, who was maybe an option for the Padres, but he obviously went to the Mets, I believe, on a three-year deal. Mets got Eduardo Escobar as well. So they added to that rotation, to that team. They're trying to go all in, it looks like. Uh, could be in on Chris Bryant when the lockout ends. Who knows? They're trying to win. Steve doesn't really care about all these luxury tax numbers and all that. He, he'll, he's not afraid to blow past them. He's the richest owner in baseball, in sports. He has the money to pay these taxes and stuff. So he just, I think he isn't on the same side as all of these smaller market owners, obviously, because he just wants baseball. So he might have a different viewpoint and say, hey, these owners that I have to 
supposedly be on the same side as. I don't agree with them. I want a deal to be done. So, yeah, I agree with your tweet this fan put in. I'm going to like this tweet because I do agree. I would approve of this stuff that the players are proposing. I, I think it's fine. Let's just get baseball going. But the small market owners or even not even small market, like the Angels, uh, Artie Moreno and the Reds, the Diamondbacks, the Tigers, guys that – teams that rejected deals, they – or <coughs> that rejected – excuse me – that rejected the $220 million luxury tax threshold, they – those teams are is what's holding it up. And Steve doesn't agree with that. He just wants baseball. And these teams don't want that. Um they want they don't even want the luxury tax to continue going up. Now, Major League Baseball is a they need 23 out of 30, not 26 out of 30. So that's fine. They have they have the numbers, but it's still as you know, the higher that that number goes up, you think that hey, maybe more owners would um, you know want to reject that offer. But getting back to this timeline here. 12.54 p.m. Pacific time was kind of when real, you know, S hit the fan, if, if you get what I'm saying there. Major League Baseball, because Major League Baseball offered the Players Association three options. And this is where the international draft comes into play. The international draft is not a thing right now. That is what Major League Baseball wants. They want to implement an international draft because they think that smaller market teams would benefit from that which is a lot of teams in baseball. And it would be more fair to those smaller market teams to have a draft, to be able to draft these 17 year olds instead of having teams like the Yankees, like the Padres recently, like with Jarl and Susanna, um, having teams like that spend money, give them, give these teenagers the most bonus pool money, the bonus money that they can to attract them and bring them into their organization at 17 years old or whatever, they want to get rid of that so that smaller market teams can compete better in, in getting those international players. But the players don't want that. Tatis, uh, Fernando, he was talking about that, saying how that would kind of damage the DR because these kids you know, rely on that money early on as teenagers for their families and all that. And uh, baseball's everything in the Dominican. And so taking away these players leverage as teenagers and saying, I have this offer from the Yankees, the Padres, you better pay me more bonus money for me to, if you want me to go there, taking away that leverage and instead giving the player saying, Hey, look, you're coming to this organization that's not great for the players' point of view, for those Latin players. And David Ortiz spoke up against that to Jeff Passan earlier today as well. So the players are not in favor of that. But Major League Baseball, they wanted a deal to happen today. Obviously, it didn't happen. But because they wanted a deal to happen, they were trying to threaten the players, one by saying, oh, we can play 162 games now all of a sudden, even though we canceled the first week of the season. So I guess they don't know what the word canceled means. Canceled means you don't make them up. I guess you can make them up if they had a deal today. Obviously, that didn't happen. But they tried to threaten the players by not only saying, yeah, we'll give you full pay in 162 games. But then at about 1 o'clock Pacific time today, they offered the Players Association three options and said, you got to accept one of these options or else we're going to cancel another week of games, which obviously happened. The three options that – Major League Baseball offered to the Players Association. Uh, the first one was you can sign the CBA uh, and take until November 15th to examine the international draft option. And if you're if you vote no on that, then they can reopen the CBA up in 2024. So it essentially would be a three after 2024 that season. So it essentially would be a three year deal, three year CBA without the international draft, if the players were opposed to that. Um, and I believe with this option, the qualifying app offer would not, or maybe it would not be in place through November 15th. And then if the players said no, the qualifying, off, qualifying offer would come back into place uh, until 2024. But So that was one option. 
The second option was you agree to the CBA without the international draft, and therefore there's still the qualifying offer attached to mo those big time players like Nick Castellanos, which is a barrier under some teams that don't want to give up a draft pick for him. Um, so, and so that second option would just be sign the CBA uh, with just as the rules are right now. We're not even, now you put in the new competitive balance tax offers and the pre-R bonus money offers and the expanded playoff and the rules and stuff like that. But in terms of the international draft, they would not include that. That's the second option. So you just agree to it as is. You're not even thinking about the international draft. Players obviously wouldn't want that because they don't want the international draft, but they want the qualif They don't want the qualifying offer, but under this option, they would have the qualifying offer still attached. So they should, they'd be opposed to that, obviously. The third option, take the original deal, which meant international draft would happen, but they don't have draft pick compensation attached to players like Nate Castellanos. Those are the three options. If I were the players, I would have picked the first option. Why not sign the CBA, take time to, to take the rest of the season to think about the international draft. And this off season, players don't have that compensation attached to them. Isn't that good for the players? Isn't that what they want? At least temporarily, that's what you'd get. Teams would be able to just have the freedom to go sign whoever they want instead of being afraid of having to give up that compensation draft pick if the player ends up going there. That not that good for the players? That sounds good for the players to me. And then I would take it also if you're forcing me to take one of those three options because it would be, like I mentioned, it would be only a three-year deal. And even if they said no to the international draft, okay, then you can just renegotiate re re after 2024. So it would, it would be like a three-year deal. It would be fine. I, so I think I would go the first option or I'd go as the rules are and just bite the butt, bite the, you know, whatever, just bite it and say, you know, oh, well, Castellanos, Bryant, uh, Bryant guys like that, qualifying offer is going to have to be attached to you uh, because we really value not having the international draft more than having the qualifying offer attached uh, because we want to protect the younger players. So I would take one of those two options. Obviously the second option was not going to happen because they didn't want the international draft. Uh, but with that said, the players didn't want that. Obviously, it all goes back to that notion, like I mentioned earlier, that the players don't want to accept what the owners are offering them. And the owners, in turn, don't want to accept what the players are offering them. They want to be the ones that control it. They want to be the ones that the other side accepted the offer. They're the ones that want to propose it, the offer, and the other side bow down to them and accept it. Because that's viewed as a win to whatever side you're, whatever side we're talking about. And obviously that's a problem uh, because then a deal's never gonna get done if that's what we're just gonna, we're just gonna play that game. Um, but at 3.30 Pacific time, the players obviously did not accept any of those three options that I went over. And so Major League Baseball said, all right, you're not gonna accept it. That's the terms that we had. We're canceling the second week of games. So we're, we're canceling games until at least April 14th. That would, that's the earliest that opening day can happen now. Okay, you're happy players. We're canceling those games now because you didn't want to accept one of our offers, by the way, that we just proposed to you today and we're trying to threaten you with. So both sides are at fault, I think, today. Um, but the owners a little bit more just because you knew the players weren't going to accept it. It's again, I've said this multiple times in previous episodes, you're proposing things that, you know, the players aren't going to accept. So what are you doing? Why? What do you, it's just PR. You're just trying to make yourself look good. And you're just trying to say, Hey, we're proposing things. Hey, look at us public. Look at us fans. Look at us casual fans. We're proposing stuff. The players are the ones not accepting it. Go get mad at them. Go yell at them. Not us. 
we're the ones trying to make a season happen. Yeah, but you're not trying hard enough. Um, so the players, like I mentioned, they rejected Major League Baseball's offer of picking up any of those three options. And instead, which I like what the players did here, instead they offered Major League Baseball the option of removing the qualifying offer for free agency this year. And if no agreement reached by November 15th, the qualifying offer returns for the 2023 prior to the 2023 season. So I don't understand. This was obviously rejected by Major League Baseball. They didn't even, I don't even think they voted on it from reports I read. But for me, I don't understand why Major League Baseball would reject this. If Major League Baseball, in one of those three options, they said they literally offered the players, hey, if you don't want the international draft, then you have to have the qualifying off. So if you were willing to not have the international draft and just sit, tell the players that we're going to have a qualifying offer as it was, as it's been the last five years and in the current CBA, then why would you not take the player's offer of implementing the qualifying offer back in a place like it usually has been after this offseason? Is it really going to hurt you that much to not have the qualifying offer this year? Like, that just doesn't make sense. They're kind of being hypocritical there and saying, so it, it's all, again, it's all about controlling the narrative and controlling what they want to do. And it's frustrating. So in one sense, they're willing to have the qualifying offer, but it's only that mean, but it's if the players accept what they, what the owners want. But then hours later, they don't want to accept the qualifying offer after this off season because the players are the ones that accepted it. So the owners don't want to accept that because they look bad and they look like they were the ones that caved. So it's all a game of, I want to be right. I want to be in control over you. That's what this is. Um, so it's just a whole bunch of embarrassing. It's just, it's really, really embarrassing, really embarrassing. And before we get out of here, I did want to go over the Padres schedule, what's affecting it, uh, because that's obviously important. This first week of games that was canceled last week, obviously, was the first two home series of the season. The second week that has now been canceled, will it be made up? Will some of these be made up? Who knows? Uh, but the second week of games that has just been canceled by Major League Baseball involves involved, past tense now, the Padres going to Arizona for four games, which would have been Arizona's home opener on, the, on April 7th, and three games in San Francisco, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 11th, 12th, and 13th. And so that April 14th Thursday night game at home against the Atlanta Braves at 640 at Petco, that is still in play. If an agreement happens, I mean, I'm not going to keep my hopes up, but if an agreement happens, that game, that would be, that would be opening day now. So the home opener, the first game of the season would be still the Padres at home because the first two weeks have canceled now. But in terms of schedule, and what that means for the Padres, that is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 14 games that have been canceled that are off the Padres schedule. Again, will those games be made up? Who knows? I don't think they at this point they can make up 14 games now. Maybe they can make up this last week of games because supposedly that's what they were going to do if there was an agreement today. They would have made up that first week of games through off days and extend the season by through three days, I believe. So that could have happened, I guess, the second week of games they could make up. But right now, it doesn't look like those will be made up. And right now, I know Major League Baseball this week, they didn't, they didn't know. They obviously proved to us that they didn't know what the word canceled means because they tried saying that they were going to make up the whole season. Uh, and that's not what canceled means. That means Cancel means you're not bringing the games back when they already canceled the first two series of the season. Uh, but supposedly they're going to bring them back now. That's not so that wasn't true. Um, now, what's really a bad look, what's really considered a bad look and what the players should be aware of, what the league should be aware of 
is that April 15th day. That would be the second game of the season, assuming that an agreement happens, which obviously you can't assume, but let's just say it happens. And opening day is April 14th, second game of the season, April 15th on the Friday night at 640 against the Atlanta Braves at home at Petco. That game is very significant. That would be the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, that would be the, or not Jackie Robinson Day. That would be Jackie Robinson Day, but it would be the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. And for Major League Baseball to reject that possible that chance of playing the, that day and having to reschedule that day or not even having that day at all, if the season doesn't even happen, would be embarrassing. And it's not like all the games got rained out that day or something. That would be different. It's the fact that you're arguing over money, and that's the reason why Jackie Robinson Day wasn't played on that day as scheduled on the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson bringing the color barrier. That's what's embarrassing. Jackie Robinson, if he were here today, would he be fighting for players' rights? Yeah, I think so. I think that's pretty safe to say. But at the same time, he would want baseball to be played on that day. He would be grateful for the salaries that they're making. And to be quite honest, he'd probably make that day and just donate it to a charity. You know, so I think... I don't want to bash the players because I understand where they're coming from. And I don't think the international draft's a good idea either. I totally agree with what the players are doing there. I, I, I to, I'm with them there. I think that having the competitive balance tax threshold offer today at 2 million over what the owners had already compromised, meeting them in the middle with at 230 million, and the players offering 232 million was a little greedy. That came off greedy. And like, come on, guys, really? You couldn't just say, okay, we'll do 230 million when the owners are meeting, have met them in the middle at that standpoint, at that, you know, that that offer, at least that as aspect of this proposal. That came off greedy, so I'm not on board with that. But I'm on a, I'm on board with a lot of pretty much almost everything that they're doing here. And but I think it would be a bad look for the owners and the players to miss the schedule Jackie Robinson day. 75th anniversary of him breaking the color barrier on April 15th and miss that day over money. I think that would be a very, very bad look. And anyone that disagrees with me, I'm sorry, you're just stupid. Sorry, starts. Sorry if that's too blunt for you, but that's just stupid. Some things are beyond money, and that day is. It's already embarrassing enough that they've had to cancel the first two weeks of the season. It would be more embarrassing if they can't get April 15th in. So it looks like that's what's going to happen. They're not going to be able to get that in because both sides just can't agree. And if they weren't willing, if the players were willing to accept any of the league's three offers and then the league was willing to contradict itself with the whole qualifying offer thing that I laid out earlier a few moments ago, then I don't see them reaching, an, uh, reaching a deal with each other in the next couple of days for April 15th to be on track. So it's not looking good. Hopefully you enjoyed and well, not enjoyed because it's not a great day, obviously. It's two weeks of games have been canceled now. Um, but hopefully you, and you learned more about this and because I feel like I'm pretty well dialed in on this stuff. So I hopefully that if you have any questions, again, at Talking Friars, Instagram, Twitter, let me know any questions. I can answer those as well. Um, and I'll be providing updates. I provided all updates all day on Twitter and had some screenshots there on Instagram for you guys. So hopefully, if you have any questions, just let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. It was informative on the Hosmer stuff, on the uh, news, obviously the unfortunate and really sad news that happened today. Two weeks of games now canceled, at least for the moment, canceled, not on the schedule. Um, Stay safe. Hopefully you enjoy tonight. Um, Mountain West basketball, San Diego State plays tomorrow. So I guess people in San Diego, you can look forward to that. Um, but it's not great. Not great. Not great.
Ben Fadden here, episode 120 of the Talking Fires podcast. Remember, this is episode 120, sponsored by Gaglione Bros, cheesesteaks and subs. Go get some cheesesteaks from Garlic Fires on them in Point Loma Sports Arena. Until next time, stay safe and be well. Ben Fadden out. See ya.